Hello everyone, um, this video is just going to be a very quick unboxing of one of the newest uh, action camera on the market which is the DJI Osmo Action. So I bought this camera two days ago uh, from B&H and they actually shipped it to me in two days uh, because they have it in stock, uh, luckily. But uh, some other places should also have it in stock fairly soon so I'll post a few links for you guys uh, to get it if you're also very interested in getting one of those newest action cameras on the market. So let's go ahead and start unboxing and then we'll take a look at see what, what's inside. So the camera costs uh, $349. And uh, I believe it's about the same price as the GoPro camera. The GoPro, uh, I think, 7 Black. Um, those are my packing slips. And over here is the camera itself, right here. This is the retail version. I paid 349 just to get this um, little action camera. Uh, the reason I got this is I have a I have a trip coming up, um, a hiking trip and a camping trip. So I want to be able to use something small to quickly just record something. I was looking for action cameras on the market, and of course right now there are a couple, only a couple 4K options uh, available. There are GoPro 7 Black, uh, the Sony's I think X3000, which is also a 4K camera. And I think there's a uh, E a 4K camera. It's a Chinese manufacturer. Um, and of course, DJI Osmo Action, which just came to the market. DJI is also a Chinese manufacturer. Uh, nowadays, some Chinese companies are actually doing some amazing jobs. So uh, kudos to them. And uh, so let's actually take a look at the packaging on the back. Uh, because I've never used this camera before, so I don't really know what to expect. Um, there's dual screen, which I think it's the reason I picked this one because the GoPro only had a screen on the back. This one has a screen in the front, so if you're doing a kind of a vlog, this is a great camera to have. And uh, I also have the 4K HDR, not sure if it's running at 60 frames per second or 30. Um, 11 meters waterproof without any kind of extra housing. Uh, 4K EIS, uh, maybe that stands for image stabilization electronic image stabilization so it doesn't have an optical image stabilizer only doing it electronically uh, by cropping the frames and try to calculate and compute uh, and output a smooth image that EIS actually takes away battery life as well um, there's 4k 60p recording and 180p at 8 times slow-mo recording um, I think that's what it means apps first in the App Store. I have an Android phone, so I'm going to download it on my uh, Galaxy Note 9. Opening up the packaging, and uh, the crazy thing is, I forgot to buy a micro SD card and I don't have one on hand, so we have to wait for a few days for my micro SD card to come in before I'm going to be able to actually physically test the image quality of the action camera. So today is just going to be a quick unboxing video of the Osmo Action. So zoom in a little more so you guys can see it in glorious 4K detail. Um, the box looks really nice, like a typical DJI packaging, like white and very simple, or shall I say Apple style packaging. So opening up the box, you have the little camera right over here. This is the little camera protection foam right over there. And uh, over here, I would assume, is the accessories pack. Let's see. Let's see here. So let's take a look at the accessories pack first, and then at the very end, we can take a look at the camera. So this is all it comes with. Empty now. Um, looks like a really nice looking tiny case. Uh, for the battery so this is basically what comes in a retail box now if you if you look at the, some some of the reviews of the Osmo 
they probably have a pre-production model that they send out to those guys to test for free and I have to buy my own so uh, that kind of sucks uh, but this is the retail package um, batteries right over here it's a zoom in a little bit um, a 13 milliamp hour battery five a five watt hour battery and uh, looks like the battery is actually uh, made by a company called Dongwan NVT Technology, which I think is a battery manufacturer, manufacturer for a lot of other OEM products. Um, so take it out of the battery pack and the battery itself actually have a seal on the edge. So I would assume you just drop this in to the camera and it becomes part of the camera for uh, water resistance purpose. Um, so basically the, the thing over here just tells you when you put it into the camera, make sure you press it really, really hard. Make sure the no orange ceiling is shown, you know, on the, uh, on the camera. That means it's, it's very well watertight and sealed in the camera. And over here, it looks like the proprietary uh, quick release mount for uh, for the camera. Over here, it looks like a helmet mount because they have a little little bit of a curvature over here. So I would say this is a flat mount, and this is probably the helmet mount. Um, and on top of the helmet mount is a little quick release thing. So that probably goes on top of the camera. And then those are actually the mounts. So I actually ordered a few extra mounts and uh, they're out of the stock. So it's coming on the way. I also ordered additional battery, uh, battery charger and the battery pack package. That one comes with two extra batteries and a quick charger for three batteries to be charged at the same time. That thing costs, I think around 50 some dollars or 69 somewhere else uh, on Amazon. Uh, everywhere is out of stock. It's gonna be another three to four weeks for that and uh, the additional months to be delivered. So keep that in mind. Uh, when you're ordering this, probably the only thing available now is just the camera with the default accessories. Over here is your USB cable and, uh, and the little thing to actually lock it in place. Let's see, take a look at the cable. See if it's micro USB or your. Oh, cool! It's it's USB C. Let's see if I can focus. Yep, USB C cable. Uh, pretty nice, and uh, uh, I think it's used for charging only. So keep that in mind. Uh, nowadays, everybody's uh, jumping into USB C bandwagon. So uh, you never know. Maybe in the future, even the other side is going to be USB C. Hmm. Um, over here, it basically just says scan this little thing to um, to uh, follow them on WeChat and over here on the other side uh, it just says go to DJI.com for support for American users um, and they have in LinkedIn, they have Instagram, um, they have Facebook, Twitter, YouTube channel, everything DJI. I used to own a DJI um, Pro uh, uh, drone a while back uh, I did a few footages and then uh, later on I sold the drone because of the FAA regulation. I don't really quite much like the regulation so I stopped using it. And uh, um, the product itself from DJI, I would say in general it's pretty pretty decent. Um, there are always areas for improvement in terms of DJI products because I also have their Osmo uh, camera, the handheld Osmo with gimbal when it first came out. And I actually dropped that thing on the floor and it broke instantly, of course. <laughs> so I also sold that one. So now the only DJI product I have is, is this brand new Osmo. Put everything aside. We're gonna take a closer look at the camera itself. Hopefully it will have some batteries inside so we can take a look at the manual system and things. A very thick manual. Uh, but of course, it's, it's in different languages, so um, it's thick, but it only, uh, the actual manual itself is actually quite thin. Uh, most of them is safety guidelines and there are specifications for the battery and the noise and uh, all the transmitter power. 
um, operating frequency, protocol, Bluetooth, uh, operating frequency, blah, blah, blah. So all the basic specifications. Um, and it specifically mentions that 5.8 gigahertz is not supported in some regions. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's no user manual in here. It's just basically a safety manual. Um, so I would assume it's going to be very simple to use and pretty much you just have to control it mostly on the app. So um, another thing that I want to let you guys know is while I was buying this, I don't know what I was what I would expect. Um, it actually came with the the bumper case. Uh, already installed on the camera itself. I thought it only comes with the camera without the bumper case. I was about to buy the bumper case for the additional $30, but it looks like they're selling that as a replacement for the bumper case over here. And uh, um, the bumper case actually is used to, um, of course, obviously mount the camera onto all different kinds of mounts and uh, uh, all different kinds of vehicles, accessories, skateboards, whatever. Um, so you actually, every time you need to mount it onto something, you need the bumper case. How it, how you open it, uh, it looks pretty simple. It looks like you just pry over here or somewhere. And uh, it's, a, uh, it's a one stage dual action. Um, thing to open the case. So you pry this here once and it releases this mechanism and then you can just release the case like that. Uh, and then you can take the camera out by pushing it somehow. I would assume you might have to remove the little... Is this, uh, is this threaded? No, it's not threaded. Um, I think it's threaded because uh, if you read closely, let's see, focus. So basically it tells you to uh, make sure to screw in this little filter ring very tightly before you go underwater. Now the problem is I couldn't even, uh, I couldn't even open this thing. It might be very tightly um, screwed on there. So, okay, you don't have to remove that to move it out of the bumper case. That's good. Uh, with the bumper case, all the buttons are still accessible uh, because there are actual um, like rubber plastic kind of a thing over here integrated. So you can press those and those in turn pushes the actual physical button in here. Um, I still want to be able to open the filter ring. So let me see if I can just, I have no idea how to open this. And it's apparently super, super tight. Um, so yeah, I don't know, uh, we'll figure out, figure this out later, but for now it can just leave it on there. So, um, the, this piece sound, it sounds, it sounds like glass. So that's good. Um, the downside is this piece is actually not multi-coated. Um, so there's no coating on top of this. Uh, I would assume that you're going to lose some of the light, um, transmission. Uh, with the reflection over here on top of this little plastic protector piece. And uh, uh, over here is a touch screen. I'm just gonna, uh, before I peel this off, the instruction basically uh, tells you what the, the QS button stands for. It stands for switching modes, switch screens, and exit. So that's your go-to button for a lot of functions. Um, I don't know what this, is. I don't know what this does because obviously there's, there's no instructions for <laughs> what that does. It might be a battery release. I honestly don't know. There's no instruction included in this. Um, so on the back, it's another instruction manual. On the top, there is a power button display off and display on, multi-function button over here. And over here is uh, basically a shutter and recording button. Uh, the buttons are very tactile, so then I, oh, I know for sure this is not a button because it doesn't have any tactile feel to it. But as you can see or oh, here, it's very tactile, so you, you're not going to miss the click. You know you click when you actually click on those buttons because it's loud and very tactile. So 
removing those, I might want to um, get some screen protectors for this later on. But for now, it actually feels very solid, very well made, um, almost feels metal-like. I think the, the case, or at least the part of it, is actually made of metal. So it's, it's pretty heavy, um, actually. I'll remove this plastic piece as well. And I'm just gonna put this in, even though I don't have a micro SD card. Let's see, where to put the micro SD card? Ah, right here. So that's the USB um, USB port right over there, and your micro SD card slot over there. Again, I don't have a micro SD card as of yet, so I can't really test the recording and the video quality. But I'm, I'll make sure uh, at end of this unboxing, put up a sample footage uh, for you guys. And how you put in the battery is basically just pretty much drop it in here, and uh, you push it. And make sure that you know it's it's really nicely uh, pushed in. There's no yellow parts showing, so it looks pretty flat, pretty flush uh, inside the thing. And oh, it, it's pretty cool. It's uh, like if you rotate this, the screen automatically detects you rotate the screen, and then it rotates like in a fairly quick fashion. So of course I'm gonna set up this really quick. Just gonna choose English, um, activate the Osmo. Uh, scan QR code. Okay, so let me go install the app really quick. I'll be back and then uh, I'm going to connect to my camera really quick. Okay guys, so um, I just installed the Osmo uh, Mimo app and I think this is the app you use to actually connect to your Osmo Action camera right over here. Um, the app itself is about 110 max, so a fairly big app. Uh, honestly, and uh, so let's actually turn the camera back on again. So you press the button on the top to turn the camera on because I haven't set it up. So it asked me to scan and connect um, with the camera. So I don't even really need to scan, it actually already detected. Um, let's see. Uh, this should be a Osmo Action, a wireless connection. So it says power on the device. So let's see. Let's see if it help. It, it, oh, okay, so it found it like fairly quickly. So I'm just gonna hit connect. And there's a code verification for security purpose. And then I'm, I'm just agreeing. And you have to enable the phone to access the device info. And I have to log into the DJI account. Uh, good things I already had a DJI account from when I had the old DJI drone. So I'm just gonna go ahead and log in. So I just finished activating and adding the Osmo to my DJI account, which I created a while back. And uh, now it's just, uh, it says keeps the app open and don't close the window. So it's gonna send that activation info to my camera right over here. And right off the bat, uh, the, I would say it looks pretty smooth. The screen looks beautiful. Um, compared to, I also had a Sony um, action cam before, the Sony 4K X3000. Compared to that, the huge advantage is LCD screen. Not to mention this one also have a front screen. Um, you have to long press for it to switch from the front and the back. And uh, if you just press this QS button once, you can switch between video modes. Right over here. Let's see if this focuses. So if I press once, switches all different kinds of modes. There's HDR, there's slow-mo, and there's time-lapse and a picture mode. Um, you can also switch by just pressing the button over here. And uh, when you press over here, there's more functions available over here. Uh, like in, this is like the full menu. So in video, you have slow-mo, you have regular video, you have HDR video, time-lapse, and in photo, you have automatic, uh, I think that's a 
that's bracketing. Auto exposure bracketing, looks like so. Um, and then you have just a photo, you have a burst mode, and you have a timed mode. I think maybe that's a self timer. Um, you go to custom, looks like I have to use the map to actually make a custom uh, feature right over here available. Um, but that's, um, okay, let's switch it back to regular video mode. And right over here, still trying to figure out how to change the modes. I think maybe I do it on the, on the actual phone app itself. So let's, let's find out. So when you finish, it, it gives you a notice for beginners. Let's see. Of course, insert micro SD card, uh, press once, so turn on the device. You have to press and hold to turn off the device. If you just press like really quickly, uh, it just turns off the screen, goes into a sleep mode. You press it down, the screen goes back on really quick. If you long press, that's when it actually shuts down. So, and the shutter record button is right over here. If you have it in photo mode, you press it once to, oh wow, uh, even, even if it's turned off, you can press this button like really quick to record it looks like, yeah. And then it, it turns the camera really quickly like on and then it starts to record or maybe take a photo. So, and over here the QS quick access, quick switch button. So you press once it, it pops up a, a whole bunch of the modes for you to quickly switch. Uh, you press and hold as I did before. Uh, it goes, it switches the screen between the front and the back. And then um, it's a touch screen. So swipe the touch screen to access more features. Tap the icon on the bottom left. So let's, let's try it. So tap the icon at the bottom left. That's uh, to access the video modes. Double tap with two fingers to switch between front screen and touch screen. Let's see. Okay. But then how do I, how do I switch back? Oh, I have, to, I have to touch. It's not as responsive as just press and hold that button, actually, honestly. Um, press again. So, it looks like if I long press, it disables the spot metering. Uh, not sure if this, this feature is, is customizable. Uh, hopefully it is. So swiping from the top, uh, you go into this little manual mode. I wish it had some texts. Uh, create and manage custom modes. So, okay, so basically you create custom modes right over here. And uh, over here looks like the brightness adjust. Over here at default, it's brightest setting. Um, screen lock, uh, you have to unlock by swiping this little thing over here. And uh, so let's go back again. What's this? That's the settings. There's a voice control, there's a snapshot, there's a quick switch. Uh, okay, you can customize the features in quick switch by enabling and disabling them over here. Uh, also have the Wi-Fi settings. Um, wind noise reduction for the microphone. And again, we're gonna test those once I get my micro SD card and I'm gonna post those on the back of this video. Um, sounds. So I think that's the sound setting it, it plays back. Every time you press the button, it goes back to the main screen, which is kind of annoying. There's the auto rotate feature, which we just discovered it was on. And what's this? So, so apparently you can have a spot metering mode. Uh, which only meters the center spot over here. Um, you can turn this off by, um, oh, you can touch and meter. Like if you have a scene you want to meter, you can meter over here and meter over here. It gives you different exposures, of course, based on the, the grayscale. And I think I long press or, okay. It's kind of confusing. Okay, you press this button to exit the mode. Um, I don't know what this two, like if I long press this, it gives me a message that says spot metering disabled sometimes, which is kind of confusing. 
um, and now I'm trying to swipe down the menu. It's not very, it's actually not very responsive. Um, so I'm going to turn off the spot metering and there's a voice control. You have to press, okay. Press once to enable, press once to disable. What's this? Full screen will be displayed in full screen view or front screen will be displayed in full screen view. So if you enable this, as you noticed before when I switched to the screen, it was displaying a kind of a, a cropped uh, view because the front screen is actually a square, square shape. Um, let's see. And this, um, this electronic image stabilization is actually kind of crazy. It's, um, it's, it's super, super stable. Um, and it moves really slowly. Like even, even if you pan your camera, it moves very slowly. Um, so there you have, there, there's my camera setup. So like, I think this is gonna kick butt when I actually put a micro SD card and do some like action shots. It's gonna keep super stable. No doubt about that. Um, so that's why I said before with that setting, the front screen actually displays the whole image so if I turn this off, go into the settings and turn this off, uh, it's gonna crop the image. So when you go back over here, if I press again, as you can see, it displays the whole image. So if, you, if composition is more important for you, you should keep the cropping. If you just want to be able to see if your face is centered in the screen, you can simply just use that square to fill the whole screen. So you always make sure that yourself, you know, is, is nicely in focus. Um, so that's, that's, that's the settings. Uh, looks like that's all the settings there is. As you can see, the touch screen is not very responsive. Sometimes it registers, sometimes, sometimes it doesn't, which is kind of frustrating. See, um, again, let's swipe from the bottom. So if you swipe from the bottom, all those modes you can you can choose. There's 60 frames at 4K, which is pretty impressive. 50 frames, 48 frames, 30 frames, 25, all the way to 24. And there are 4K 4x3, four 4 to 3, uh, 4 to three uh, ratio. And this is probably the largest uh, size of the 4K resolution available. And in this mode, because it couldn't crop the image to process it fast enough, the electronic image stabilization is disabled. So you can only enable it in regular 4K resolution um, and you can disable and enable that option, electronic image stabilization option on the top over here on the corner. Um, over here I have 2.7K, uh, 4x3 and 2.7K, uh, 16 to 9 and 1080p. Let's see what kind of frame rates we have. We have all the way from 60 all the way to 120, 200, 240. In those frames above 60, the electronic image stabilization is not available in 1080p. So keep that in mind. In 720p, uh, we can go as high as 240 frames per second. Also quite impressive. Um, I think the 720p is only used for slow-mo action shots. So keep that in mind as well. I think most people is gonna stay with 1080p uh, if they don't want to touch the 4K content and for like simple editing purpose. Um, and for people who love high resolution, crisp, clear image quality, of course, they want to stay with 4K. And if they actually need rock steady image stabilization, they definitely want to keep the electronic image stabilization on in those modes uh, in 4K. And uh, that should produce a really, really stable image. So I'm really excited and really looking forward to test out once I get my SD card. But at this point, um, the actual, you know, manual walkthrough uh, is right over here. So it looks like I can also swipe over this way to bring up some features. Over swipe that way is the exposure control. I can select ISOs um, manually or, oh, wow, that's really dark. Um, you, can, you can choose a ISO max range. So, if you don't want your ISO to go too high, you can set a limit on your ISO and then able to keep the noise low and uh, you know try to make sure the image comes out nice. So that's the ISO max setting. 
there's exposure uh, compensation. Uh, you can go all the way from plus three to minus three for your settings. Um, but I found that for the display, like the zero looks just fine. You have total manual control over here and you can control the ISO, you can control the shutter speed, you can control the, uh, oh, that, that's the two thing you can control. You, you can't really control ISO because if you set ISO max to, let's see, 400 and you go to menu, it's, it, it locks the ISO maximum at 400, but then it's gonna, oh, never mind. What am I talking about? So if you go to the manual control, you can select auto, and then you can choose a manual ISO based on your setting. Uh, and the shutter speed over here. Obviously you couldn't control the aperture because I think the machine actually controls it for you. And I think this is the 2.8 lens. Uh, and I'm not even sure if the aperture is changeable. It's probably a constant 2.8. That's why a lot of times when you do videos outdoors, you have to use an ND filter because the aperture doesn't go small enough and your image is, is gonna be way overexposed uh, if you try something crazy, okay? So there are all the controls over here. And if you go over here, click on the video setting, uh, there's a whole bunch of options over here as well. Let's see, so there's white balance. You can do a custom white balance for the video based on the Kelvin setting or just leave it to auto. In terms of color, you can have a normal and a cine-like. Cine-like is more like a log profile. It gives it a, a much flat looking image it looks like. Uh, I'm gonna keep it at normal. And there's a D-wrap control, which changes the perspective. So if you turn it off, of course, the edge have that little round thing over there. If you leave it on, um, it's gonna try to make the edge straight, but then it also crops into some of the images um, to, to get that straight look because the image is automatically cropped. And there's also a recording format, you can record it at MOV format or MP4 format. And I think that's pretty much all the settings there is. Um, what I want to say is that a, the touch screen is slightly less responsive compared to, of course, like a cell phone or things like that. But it, it is actually a capacitive touch screen. And I think the material is probably a polycarbonate plastic. You might want to get a screen protector for it, both the front and the back, of course. Um, but that actually concludes this quick unboxing. So one last thing before I go, I'm just gonna turn this off and put it in the, the little, um, what, what do you call it? The, the cage and then I'm gonna test out those little mounts and see if, if they kind of work or not over here without actually putting them on anything. Um, one thing I noticed, uh, the camera gets really, really hot. Like for the time I was doing this review, like now if I put my hand over here, like even on the screen, I can feel the camera actually runs pretty hot. Um, I think if you are able to actually turn off the screen uh, on the camera, you'll be able to save some battery life and make the camera less hot, but at this stage, I found the camera to be running pretty hot. Um, on bottom of this cage is your, it looks pretty GoPro-like. It's probably a standard GoPro mount, and it's probably compatible with your existing GoPro accessories. So in case you want to switch from GoPro to a DJI Osmo Action, you can probably just do that super easily and keep all your GoPro accessories and just sell your GoPro camera. Um, but I think when, if people are happy with their GoPro, I don't think there's a reason to switch to this, unless for the front screen over here. Um, but the cool thing is um, this clamp actually clamps it down really nicely and uh, it actually clamps to a metal um, end over here. So it, it stays really, really, it stays really, really stable. Um, and over here, there's a little screw over there. So just in case you think your hand is not good enough, you can use a screwdriver and further tighten the thing down. Again, this mount, you can put it on your helmet, which is the curved one over here, or a flat surface, which they have this little round. Uh, both of those have the standard 3M VHB outdoor using tape on there. Those tapes 
actually a pretty sticky and if you have a pretty clean surface they're gonna stay there forever um, just quickly uh, put this on there and then you can quickly turn like leave it off uh, everything is done like in a very quick fashion so let me just demonstrate it. You press this little tab and then you can just take it off and put it on. Just turn it all the way to the end until you hear a, a loud click. A small click doesn't work. You need to hear a loud click and double check. You don't want to uh, damage your 400, almost $400 investment uh, because you didn't tighten the, the thing. So there you have it. It's, it's, it's a pretty simple and basic device. There's really not much like fancy things to it. The only thing I need to figure out is how to take this protective thing off. At this moment, I'm, I'm not able to. That's, that's just crazy. Um, I may reach out to DJI and find out what's going on because I couldn't take it off um, on the review. Maybe they over tighten it. I think that's probably the case. So quickly test those buttons. Um, Still very tactile, like even with this bumper case with additional like rubber, rubber thing on top, everything's very tactile. You can still hear the click. It's just you have to press a little harder with a little bumper case on here. Um, and I think if you have this thing over here, you can probably hold it easier than actually just holding the camera itself right over there. And uh, that's pretty nice. The microphone is over here on this side, it looks like. Um, just take a very close-up look of the GoPro, uh, <laughs> not GoPro, the DJI Osmo Action before we actually uh, call this video a completion. Okay, so here you go. Uh, very, very rigid construction. Um, and uh, almost GoPro-like. So, and it feels... It feels pretty hefty on the on hand. It doesn't feel cheap at all. Um, and this aluminum piece, still trying to figure out how to take this off. Um, not sure what this area is for. I think it's made into a heat sink, so actually uh, disperses heat through this little uh, design over here uh, because they have more of the surface for the heat to actually dissipate uh, from where it generates uh, inside the camera. All right, so one last thing I want to mention before I leave this unboxing is the battery design is pretty clever. Um, there's a two notch design. So you first have to release this one and the second you have to push this one out and the battery just pops right out. To push it in, you have to make sure this side is in and this side is in. Uh, when it's fully inserted, there's no orange thing displaying over here. Like if there's any orange displaying over here, that means the battery is not fully in, okay? So uh, that's a safety feature built uh, kind of like into the, uh, the Osmo Action over here to make sure that the battery is fully inserted, it's waterproof, and it's ready to go. So, um, so that concludes this video of the unboxing of the Osmo Action. If you guys have any questions uh, before I post any sample footages, um, just feel free to uh, let me know in the comment section and I'll try my best to answer for you guys. Um, and in the end, I think I'm gonna really enjoy this product. It's very rigid, it's very well made. Uh, even this like heat sink feature on the top looks just super, super cool. Um, the only thing I need to figure out is how to unscrew the filter ring because it's super, super tight. I wasn't able to do anything to the ring at all. Uh, another thing is that the screen is kind of sluggish. so. Hopefully they'll be able to fix the sluggish thing through a maybe firmware update or things like that. I might check on my app because I haven't even opened my app yet. But uh, that's it. Um, thank you so much for watching. So uh, if you found this video helpful, please do hit the like button um, or subscribe to my channel and I, I should have more uh, contents, similar contents coming out for you guys. So thank you again and uh, take care guys.